Sabya, please share it in full screen mode. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that is A very good evening to all of you. On behalf of ZLearn, I, Paramita Chattopadhyay, thank each one of you for joining us for the first session of Litera Gantavya 2022. 
After the overwhelming response to Litra Gantavya 21, we are back with Litra Gantavya 2022. As they learn, it's our constant endeavor to brace the 21st century learners to meet the challenges of the dynamically evolving world by providing them a platform to explore the highest education opportunities in alignment with their skills and interests. This program aims to provide insights to the students regarding career opportunities aligned to the various courses. The objective of Litra Gantavya is to guide the students, help them identify the best opportunities based on their skills and interests. It is a platform to share crucial information regarding higher education opportunities to empower the students to make the right decision at the time of stream selection. Please note, there is a link in the description box of the YouTube live to submit your questions, which will be taken up by the guest speaker at the end of the presentation. We extend a very warm welcome to our guest speaker of the evening, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Singh, Associate Dean of Academics at the Shivnadar University. A very warm welcome, sir. Shivnadar University with campuses in Delhi NCR and Chennai is a multidisciplinary research focused and student centric university offering a full range of academic programs at the undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral level. The university's goal is to become internationally recognized for the quality of its research and creative endeavors and the applicability to improving quality of life, generating new insights and expanding the boundaries of human knowledge creativity. Committed to excellence in teaching, research and service, the university aims to serve the higher education needs of India and the world beyond. Dr. Rajiv Kumar Singh is an Indian computer scientist known for his exceptional teaching performance and research excellence in the area of optical communication and machine learning. He completed his schooling from Delhi Public Schools and went on to obtain a master's bachelor's degree in computer science from Delhi University. He then acquired a master's in computer science and technology and a PhD from JNU New Delhi. He presently works as the associate professor in the Department of Computer Science at the Shivnada University, where he also holds the position of associate dean of academics. Dr. Rajiv has published research articles in various journals and conferences in the area of communication and medical imaging using machine learning techniques. He has received the outstanding faculty award from Shivnada University, as well as from Cognizant Limited, a IT giant. Dr. Singh's diverse industry experience prior to joining the formal education system enabled seamless integration of conceptual knowledge and practical implementation in his lectures, making them impactful learning for his students who are now placed with the top organizations the world across. Once again, a very warm welcome to Dr. Singh and to all the parents and educators who have joined us for the Litra Gantavya 2022. Please do remember to share your questions in the description, in the link shared in the description box. Handing over the session to you, Dr. Singh. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, let me just share my screen before I start. Okay, so I go here. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? All right. Yes, sir, we can see that. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Paramita, for this long and detailed introduction. Thank you, Sabisachi, for organizing this. Thank you, uh, Shivnada University, for uh, requesting me to do this. So, uh, you know, when Sabisachi contacted me for this talk, I, I suggested him that maybe multidisciplinary education uh, is something which I have seen as a bedrock of successful students in the last many years. And, and therefore I thought this might be a good idea to share with the parents and, and students. So hence this topic. So I'll go into details uh, of some of the basic aspects that we have seen, which has worked. And I have also uh, experience of studying at some of the prominent universities in India and visiting some of the prominent universities abroad. So I'll also bring some of those experiences in front of you, and then we'll see uh, whether it actually suits us or not. Okay. 
Uh, so first thing which we all talk about these days and post COVID, this has become a big term, which is VUCA, right? So we all know what does it mean, but I'll, I'll, I'll still clarify, just give me a minute to, yes. So, you know, uh, VUCA world is a very common term, which is used. I hope you can see my pen. So I'm just, because I'm a faculty, I have the habit of writing. Okay. So the V stands for, you know, volatile. Uh, U stands for uncertain, okay? So it is uncertain. And C stands for complex. And A stands for ambiguous. Now I'm sure most of you would be able to relate to these terms, whether you're working in a government sector or a private sector, or you're a faculty member, you're a student, you're a parent, Everyone is experiencing almost all of these terms in their daily life, right? So a wife is saying, okay, my life has changed because husband is staying all the time at home. Okay. The husband is saying, okay, I am completely disturbed. I, while I'm working, the kids are sitting on my lap. They are using my laptop. They are using my mobile. The teachers are disturbed because they are saying that, you know, students are, you know, uh, attending the online classes, but switching off their mobile, uh, switching off their videos, they're watching uh, games, they are playing games. You know, everyone is facing this difficulty. Even the students are facing this difficulty. There are students that I have seen the last two months who are saying to me that we want to study, but we get distracted by the kind of information which keeps popping on our phone. We've downloaded so many apps on the phone. Each time there's a message, whatever I'm doing, I just get distracted. And then it takes an hour from my side, right? So this kind of ambiguity, this kind of volatility, this kind of complexity was not there a few years back, right? So since we are all experiencing in all walks of life, you know, in all, all kinds of scenarios, we would need to change and adapt to this. I'm not saying this is bad. All I'm saying is this is different. And since it is different, our behavioral aspects also need to change. And one of the prominent places where we need to work hard is the education sector. So education sector in the last many years was very, uh, I would say stable and it didn't change uh, for good or bad, whatever, but it didn't change much. But post COVID, this question is being asked globally that is education going to be relevant in future if we continue doing what we are doing right now? And every school is asking this question, every university is asking this question, and I think every parent and student is asking this question. My answer to this is the schools and universities will always be needed, will always be needed. There cannot be a time in the life of this universe where anybody can say that we don't need education, but the definition of education, the methodology, those things all need to change. If it doesn't, it will be a problem of a different proportion, okay? So uh, Mark Twain said that education is a path from cocky ignorance to miserable uncertainty. So what I'm trying to say is that despite this education, we will have some of these uncertainties. What we need to understand is that our education system should make us embrace those uncertainties, should make us you know, uh, live with those uncertainties, should make us understand that these are part and parcel of life and we have to react to them in the best possible way. So, you know, um, so I keep telling my students that there are obviously two education, two types of education or two kinds of education. One should teach us how to make a living and the other should make teach us how to live. Okay. And these two are not the same thing. So therefore, uh, you know, I, I'll go to some of these aspects, but let me also give you some direct answers as to why even uh, you know, multidisciplinary education is going to solve some of these problems. The answer is there are certain things which can be solved immediately. There are certain things which would be taking some time. But if we take the steps right now, we would be going in the direction which is towards the problem solving. Okay. So a small gist of what, what I have seen in the last few years of my experience at Shivnada University when we started this university, and I'm one of the founding faculty, I, I am here since the day one, 
and I've seen every brick being laid here. Okay. But what I'm proud of is not that brick. What I'm proud of is the kind of students that we have produced. And we have produced those kind of students because, first of all, they were all passionate about what they were getting into. They didn't get into uh, physics because they were forced to study physics. They get into physics because they were interested in physics. All right. They were interested. But the parents said, no, you have to do computer science because that's what the buzzword is. At Shivnada University, we gave them the opportunity to study both physics and computer science. We gave them the opportunity to study both English as a, as a subject, as a proper subject, and let's say electrical engineering. We gave them the option to study history and sociology. We gave them the option to study business and sociology. That's the kind of curriculum that we created. And we got this idea from many faculty members that we contacted from Harvard to Stanford to Cornell to IIT to JNU to Delhi University to Calcutta University. We contacted best people from all these places and we brought them into one room and said, tell us what do you think is missing in the Indian education system? And almost everybody said that you, we have a, a single view of every uh, problem. What we need is a multi-dimensional view of a problem. And for that, you need multidisciplinary education. That's the, the curriculum that we created. And I have definitely seen that it helps in job. It helps in better living. It helps students to actually go for higher studies in very different areas. Let me give you an example. Uh, we, are, we are discussing to start a program in cognitive sciences. Now to start that program, I contacted neuroscientists, I contacted sociologists, I contacted one of my friends who is at IIT Kanpur, computer science professor. I contacted sociologists, I contacted a dance instructor, I contacted a music instructor. All those people uh, came to our place, we discussed and debated as to what should be the cognitive science curriculum. We are still debating, it is going to take time. So I met uh, the professor from Kanpur and they have started a department of cognitive sciences. They've hired people from all over the place. It is not only computer science people, computer science people, uh, you know, uh, psychology people, sociology experts, human resource expert, management people, all of them are together trying to create a program in cognitive sciences. This is the world of future. So the academic structure that we are going to create for any program, and there'll be different versions and types and all good, that will evolve with time. But, uh, you know, but what we have seen is that if we follow something like this, it actually creates a, a citizen, a, a scholar who is ready to go to any place in the world, any problem given to him, he will have a way to solve that problem. He may not know everything, but he will know enough to engage with people who are knowing other things, right? That's important, right? So this is the kind of setting which is going to create extraordinary opportunities as we move ahead, as we move ahead in this VUCA world, which is going to be complex, which is going to be you know, uncertain, which is going to be, you know, requiring a different kind of skill set. I'm not saying whatever we know today is going to be irrelevant. No, that will be needed, but there'll be many things above and beyond that, which would also be needed. And to do that, we need to start working on a different curriculum, different kind of pedagogy from today. The last day to modify our way of teaching and learning was yesterday. We are running short of time. We have to move very fast in trying to create the kind of citizens which would take India to a very different level. And I can tell you with my experience of students, students are very passionate. They are highly energetic. Okay, what they need is a direction. And that direction has to come from teachers. That direction has to come from parents. That direction has to come from friends. So all of us have to work together and create an ecosystem such that our students really get the fruits of such kind of uh, phenomenal changes which we are planning to do, right? Let's go back 
Uh, so you know some of these terms are very important. So when is when you say uh, multidisciplinary education, what exactly does it mean? So one is multiple discipline. So multiple discipline means so uh, the term multiple discipline means that I can be an engineering student plus I can understand sociology. Now, tomorrow you would ask me, why do an engineering student need knowledge of sociology? How does it help? Okay. He can do design. You will ask me the same question. He can do history. You will ask me the same question. Okay. So let me give you a perspective. Now, I am an engineer, right? I did my bachelor's in, from Delhi University in computer science did my master's in computer science, did my PhD in computer science, published papers, I'm still doing it. But I'm also an administrator, okay? Now, as a role of academician, who is also an administrator, I have to deal with students every day. I have to deal with faculty members every day. I have to deal with organizations every day. I have to deal with parents every day. Now, I need a skill. So suppose an employer comes, I got a call in the morning from Economic Times to speak at one of their forums. Now, the point is, why did they call me? They called me because I have the ability to connect uh, computer science and the media and the people. Ultimately, what is computer science going to do? It is going to solve people's problem. So if a computer scientist doesn't understand people, how will he solve his problem? Right. So it is important that they understand history. History will give them a perspective. History is not just a knowledge of facts. It is critical thinking. It tells us that, okay, Napoleon was one of the very successful, uh, let's say, uh, you know, king, but what made him fail in the end? Why did he succeed till a certain point? So I tell my students that, look, you, you are very talented. You become successful. You start running a race, but at the end of the day, there is a place where somebody will apply a break and that break will make you fail. So at, at one point of time, because of the greed, because of excess greed, he failed. Right? So that people skill, which led him to success at till some point, you know, got him into a greed. He start, stopped listening to his advisors and finally he was, he was defeated and killed, right? So that is the knowledge. History is not just knowledge of facts. Oh, which year he was born, which he was dead, which you know war he won. No, that's information which is available by a click of a mouse or just a button or by your finger. But what is important is the critical thinking skills. Why something succeeds? Why something fails? No, history is not just about medieval India. You know, if we look at how did Apple come into picture? That's also history. So knowing the knowledge that what happened during those times will help you when you become an entrepreneur. When you start a company of your own, that, that knowledge would help you. And a lot of people are, are, are basically willing to do those things. They are, they are uh, you know, fearless. So they need those knowledge, not just the subject knowledge that is needed. It's many other skills which are needed. That is why you know, the holistic understanding knowing various aspects of our daily life is very, very important, right? I can see, I have been visiting many schools and universities, and I can see one of the biggest challenges that has happened in the last two years, and everybody's talking about this, is mental health. Now, how will that improve if the child is not even going out and talking to anybody else? Just making a friend has become difficult for many children, right? So this is the reason why a holistic understanding let them just be on their own, sports, other uh, aspects of learning. They're all, we, uh, we are planning on what we call as co-curricular transcript, which means anything beyond classroom is called as co-curricular, not extracurricular. It is co-curricular. All that is also supposed to help students acquire certain skills beyond just the technical knowledge of subject which would help them do a better job when they start working or they start their own organization or they go for you know um, higher studies or anything else that they do in their life okay it gives them different perspective what happens when you get different perspective when you get different perspective 
you start appreciating their side of story right as a parent i am uh, quite old and my child says no baba you are very old you don't understand us so i have to listen to their side of story only when i listen to their side of story can i become their friend so teacher has to understand student students has to understand other student everybody has to understand i may not agree with you but i need to understand my view can be different from your view okay which is all fine we don't have to fight to uh, to come to a a common view right but the point is that i need to at least understand right so different perspectives in every problem is important real world approach right so it is basically saying that you know when i am looking at a problem i need to see can i apply this problem in the real world and if i have to apply this problem in the real world i need to see those perspective i make a software and if i make a software i have to go and implement it i need to see whether i am able to connect to people let's take an example of an a uh, website right all of you use a website all of you use an app now there are some apps which are very popular there are some which are not why just because the 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 design of the app or design of the website is very good you like it if it is not very good you stop going to it okay it understands how you think go to amazon it has so many features which they have understood because amazon hires sociologists amazon hires uh you know neurologist amazon hires uh design experts amazon hires computer science people amazon hires all kinds of people to <coughs> to uh make sure that the way the system is designed on the amazon website is you know is trying to catch the attention of people which will ultimately help maximize their profit and value that they generate collaboration uh is an extremely important skill of the future <clears throat> sorry it is it is very very important even now and it was always important but we never could actually do that formally in the classroom so i'll give you some examples i'm sure many of you already know it but <clears throat> so before we go into these details i would say there are three participants in this whole education scenario uh <clears throat> sorry uh one is the faculty which is uh which is teachers in the school uh faculty professors in the university uh the other is the students and the third is the parent now in this in this three dimensional view the central aspect is student the teacher and the parent has to work so that the student learns our philosophy since ages was that we are above them therefore we are sage on the stage <clears throat> and we need to move away i am talking both from the parent and the teacher side we need to move away from that thinking and become what we call as guide by the side now this is you know um this aspect of thinking is simply saying democratize the process okay it is not it is you know students are equal as us not in terms of knowledge we may have more knowledge we may have more experience right but that doesn't mean that i put down the student as saying no you don't know anything i will tell you just learn and remember no that's not what we need to do we have to assume that that they are constantly learning from various other sources and they may be those sources can be wrong can be right we need to tell our students that these are the aspects that you have to include in your overall learning that is why i keep saying to people that teachers have these three uh, <clears throat> love they they have a love of learning they have a love of learners but they should have and they should have the love of bringing the first two loves together they love their student they love their learning but they need to bring the learning and the learners together that is their job you know our job as a teacher is not to make the student completely repulsive for books he has to love his book i can i can decrease my content if it increases my students love for books 
if it increases my student love for you know learning himself or herself the moment we generate that interest in the student they will you know do anything the ability of our students today uh, and i'm saying from my many years of experience with variety of students that i have seen is just phenomenal you know people of all generations say oh this is not a good generation ours was good but i keep saying this is a phenomenal generation okay this is very very good generation they have so much information why don't they why don't we just move to the next stage we are not moving to the next stage because we are not giving them direction all we need to do is to give our current generation direction so we have our role and that role is guide by the side other things that i've, I've uh, seen is that almost all student from nursery to uh, phd everybody is using online resources what's the problem let them use it let them use it then use the classroom time for discussion parents if they if you know you just need to regulate the time that they spend on laptop or mobile because it's also a health hazard but if they are if you are telling them use for one hour and then discuss with me or write a paragraph uh, at the end of the day what did you learn today you have to be innovative you simply cannot say don't use mobile don't use laptop nothing going just open your book and notepad and write no they will they will you know they will revolt so the best thing is collaborate with them let them learn certain things online you choose the content you say look at these five things that i have chosen for you today you know use your time find the right content share with them and say see these things you know in the evening we'll discuss and debate the faculty members can say i will i would want you to write a paragraph i would want i will ask you on the things that you studied yesterday through this resource so i would when this is my perception this is my way of doing things i generally want to collaborate with them on the techniques and methods that they feel comfortable i am only concerned about the outcome of the learning if there is a if there is a feeling in me that this method leads to better learning outcome i am ready to explore and use that method i am just urging all the teachers and parents also to uh, use that method so this this again uh, the conception i'm i'm just trying to expand the meaning of multidisciplinary education it simply doesn't mean that you have you can read multiple subjects but all from hard copy books and hard copy notebooks i'm trying to say that you can acquire this multi dimensional knowledge also from multi dimensional sources so as a teacher i may not do all the things i will do uh, discussions i will spend time on on answering your questions asking uh, you know supporting your uh, critical thinking but get the facts from online resources i i know and each teacher can find a way to to use such approaches it's not that you do it for every class but let's say out of 10 classes five can be this you know all the parents can say that two days you're not going to touch laptop or mobile but for the five days one hour each is reserved that is going to help your child learn better in all kinds of settings the other thing examination now this is a big problem this is actually a crisis complete crisis in our country uh, and and i'm not talking about only about school school universities everywhere are actually driven by uh, you know coaching centers and uh, i am not against coaching center i have actually uh, consulted for some of them but i keep saying that this is one of the problems which has taken away the joy of learning every student in class 12th will say why should i learn anything else iit j is asking physics chemistry and mathematics so i have to give at the end of the exam and based on the exam i am getting a particular branch to study so i am getting computer science or mechanical or civil not because i like it i'm getting it because that is what is given to me by the rank that i get i have no answer for that i don't know when will you improve but i can only say that you know in all american university this is not the model that they follow so they all ask a student to write a statement of purpose and they say okay why do you want to come to computer science why do you want to go to mechanical why do you want to go to civil why do you want to go to sociology give us a reason 
that statement of purpose is a very good document which tells the reviewer as to this student is genuinely interested in studying something and uh, hence uh, we should help him support him so i think there you know in few years time you would see the government of india is doing some tremendous changes and the new education policy is a step in the right direction and i would say that while things are not very good at this point of time in future it is likely to improve significantly they are trying to implement some of these developed countries model of education and uh, i hope and i'm i'm sincerely hoping that our examination system is also going to uh, move uh, in the right direction but as a parent uh, we must support our children if they have alternative ways of uh, you know uh, performing take that take a note of that there are some students who may not write very well but they are extremely sharp thinkers you know help them don't just put a lot of some pressure is actually good so you know I, i'm not a proponent of saying that don't put any pressure on the child i think that's not a great statement to make at least from my perspective so i keep saying that for any performance some pressure is essential but it shouldn't be too much right so it should not happen that you say to your child that you know marks are not important i don't care no i say marks are important but they are not the only factor which defines your success okay so marks are important work for that but look at other things also don't compromise your sports do some uh, sports do some you know basic uh, yoga do some basic uh, you know uh, time spend time with friends they are all very important so social skills are also important you know your sports skills are also important your speaking skills are also important and going forward they will probably be more important so therefore as the country evolves we will also evolve but at this point of time we need not be on the extreme side saying stop everything and just prepare for it. i think we need to we need to somehow balance uh, because our children as i said they are uh, very very uh, you know uh, good provided we put faith on their abilities so i i i have seen this that as a parent if you put faith on the abilities of your child and not wrong faith okay they are they are very young they can actually become anything that they feel passionate about but we need to put faith on them and support them and be with them all the time that is very very important okay so since i am a computer science professor i thought i must uh, add this that you know we so we are using this technique called artificial intelligence now what is ai doing ai is basically trying to uh, create machines which can think like humans which can act like humans so we are trying to create machines which becomes human like you know i have a friend who did phd in computer science and his thesis topic was consciousness he's a computer science uh, expert but he worked on consciousness okay you can understand what does it mean he was basically he is trying and in his thesis he wrote that how human minds become conscious of various things and how do i make this into a model which can be implemented in the computer system but what is happening on the other side is that we are all trying to say to our students remember this write the definition as i have taught in the class you miss any word you get zero that's not what we are supposed to do so the differentiator between student and i mean between human and machines are very fine going forward and the ability of critical thinking collaboration you know basic human skills empathy those are going to define the success of individuals not just the information information you know the ability of computers to remember i give 100 books to a computer machine and i use what we call as natural language processing in artificial intelligence the i can create a program which will remember every word of those 100 books in just 5 minutes that system needs to be on for 5 minutes after the training and all that is done up once i deploy you give 100 books with 1000 page each it will remember every fact of those 100 books of 1000 each in just 5 minutes in just 5 minutes 
and if, if you ask them to summarize that that is also possible okay but there are various critical thinking questions which suppose i <clears throat> i ask that model the ai that you know uh, if we would not have you know uh, shut down the country during the uh, covid what would have happened that answer it could not give because that is a counterfactual question and that answer needs a lot of thinking which system will not be able to do that machine can do we need to spend time there right so this is just a <clears throat> pictorial representation that we are we are uh, we need to understand that where are we heading i keep telling everyone <clears throat> that it is very very important to work on the mindset of people okay technical skills can be acquired these skills take a lot of time you know when we hire and when i used to recruit for uh, one of the companies where i used to work if a student knows less of java java is a language we use in computer science i would recruit him but if he was obstinate if he was not ready to learn new things if he was fixated on a particular technology i would always reject him because i thought that i can teach him java in next 7 days i can teach him myself but the other skills are very hard to change very very hard to change that to at the age of 30 35 okay so my sense is at this point of time as a parent as a teacher we all need to sort of spend some time on making sure that our children have the growth mindset we also have the growth mindset for example how do we deal with failures okay now <clears throat> one we can all fail and we all fail we do we take so many decisions every day and some of them are right some of them are wrong that's okay so that failure is not going to define you what is important is how do you respond to that failure so i keep saying that these crises will happen these crises will happen personally professionally okay now it's not that we have to work for creating crises but we need to work for managing those crises how do we manage the crises in our personal relationships you know i have seen my seen some of my friends fail completely because they couldn't imagine that they will uh, they will have a problem right because they were all performers they were toppers you know everything that they did they succeeded but you know in personal relationship they failed miserably why because they were not adaptive they didn't appreciate the other side of the story they were only working for themselves and they didn't respect the other individual whether it is a organization or whether it is uh, you know partner in life or whether it is son and daughter right so it's important that we develop a mindset which we call as growth mindset and the growth mindset doesn't deter you from working hard it says it's saying okay i have failed i'm fine i this i will use an opportunity to move ahead i will learn from the mistakes right so challenges will make them grow further it will not let them uh, die it will give them a kick to move further in life right uh so i'll tell you a story uh, you know a uh, long time back in 1903 uh, you must have heard about ford motors in 1903 henry ford uh, founded this ford motor company okay and uh, many of these car companies uh, copied him and they all uh, you know started uh, their car business at a place called detroit in us okay now this detroit actually became the automotive capital of us so the city because of ford itself was a big organization and then many other car companies all their partners they all started there it at that point of time detroit offered the highest median income okay highest rate of home ownership uh, in any major us city but what happened in on july 18 2013 2013 detroit city acted filed for bankruptcy okay and and that's a you know it's it was a historical moment uh in in us history because they had a debt of close to 18 to 20 million us dollars so what happened there why did it fail it failed because the markets changed the market completely changed and this this unimaginable event where one of the biggest car company was set up 
the city was buzzing with activities all day and night, just collapsed. Today, you know, uh, all the, uh, you know about most of the Middle East countries never had taxes. Uh, in fact, they used to give money to their people. Uh, uh, in, even now they do. But the oil prices crashed a few years back. And while it is high right now, they're all concerned about the fact that electrical cars are taking traction. There may be problem with uh, you know, the requirement of oil and natural gas. And therefore, all of them are trying to find now newer ways of uh, doing business. So they're all trying to adapt. And that is one of the important things. So this is, this is the core thing that you know, we don't know what is going to work in future. And nobody knows. Uh, nobody has an answer to that question. And we're not talking about today. You know, your children will go to a job, let's say five years hence or 10 years hence and, and so on. We're talking about few years from now. And few years from now, the kind of opportunities that we'll have, and I can say with my experience of last few years, and all of you can add to it, that it is definitely going to be much better than what it is. Okay, it, it, there is no doubt on that part, but it is going to be very different from what it is today. And for us to adapt, if I don't know what it is going to be, how do I teach my children? So therefore, I have to look at what are the skills which are transferable. And, and multidisciplinary education gives me an opportunity to teach a child both computer science and sociology. It gives me an opportunity to teach both a mechanical and design. It gives me an opportunity to teach a, a person who is English uh, major, but works in Google, which is a tech company. Right, that opportunity will open if you go to a program which offers you opportunity to learn from many other faculty members, many other classmates. Right, so this is why it is important that we need to bring passion into education. We need to give opportunity to the students to learn from variety of courses which otherwise would not come from a single, uh, you know, course. So we have huge uh, problem as of now in our country, because we lack, you know, this is a big country, right? India is a big country. How many Nobel Prize winners we have produced? Why? Why we have not produced? Just, just check the number of Nobel Prize winners just from one institution, let's say Harvard or, or Cambridge, and you'll be surprised. So I think what is important today is that we all need to sit back, do Samudra Manthan, right? And we have to work hard to make sure that our children get the right education, a right kind of training, right kind of learning, which gives them the pleasure of learning. It shouldn't come as a pain. It should come in the form of a pleasure. And if they have to enjoy, then they have to love that. Otherwise, we can't enjoy it, right? So... I would want, if I have certain skills that I need my, my people to know, I would want that you know my children should have some vision. They should be able to see something ahead. It shouldn't be very clear, but that's okay. They should be fearless. They should be tenacious, okay? They should imagine themselves to be high flyers. They have to have vitality, right? They should have passion and reason, okay? Passion without reason is going to be a big problem, okay? So they should have passion and they should be having reason to think. So as an educator, all the time, I think about expanding the capacity of my students to think rather than telling them what to think. I would rather tell them how to think. And that is what my job as an educator is. And uh, you know the concept of creativity or collaboration or capacity building is what I try to provide in my courses of computer science. And uh, as a faculty, as a parent, I'm a parent, a faculty, I, I see that our role is to tell our children to be resilient, okay? They need to welcome uh, uncertainty with a strong iron hand. And, uh, you know, and some of these aspects that I've just touched upon uh, would be covered if we give them a kind of education uh, which I uh, was talking about, which is multidisciplinary education. And with this, I will end my talk and uh, I'll hand it over to Paramita. And Paramita, you may feel free to collate the questions 
and uh, hand it over to me. I hope uh, uh, all of you, will, you know, got something out of today's uh, talk. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh. It was indeed enlightening and insightful. I'm sure all the parents, uh, students and teachers who attended the session would agree. And I think the last bit which you said, that passion without reason is dangerous. And I think nothing more uh, true than that, because otherwise only passion can lead to fanatism. Only when there is a reasoning alongside can we be more creative. So I think that's very, very uh, right. Uh, uh, Dr. Singh, we would like to, uh, the questions are kind of coming in. I will uh, collate, collate them. Uh, before that, we would like to know a little bit about what are the offerings of uh, Shiv Nadar in terms of the undergrad courses or the postgrad courses, which are, you know, which are available for our students to take up basis their interests. And uh, so we have, uh, thank you for that question, Paramita. We have four schools. Okay, so university is divided into four schools, which offer undergrad program, master's and PhD. Uh, so we have School of Engineering, which offers computer science, electrical and computer engineering, civil, chemical, and mechanical engineering. Okay. Then we have School of Social Sciences, which we call a School of Humanities and Social Sciences, and they offer English, BA Research. All our programs are four years. Okay. So they offer BA Research English, uh, Sociology, International Relations, Economics, Economics and Finance. Okay. Uh, and then we have School of Natural Sciences, wherein we offer physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, and life sciences, which is biotechnology. Uh, and then we have School of Management, which offers Bachelor of Management Studies. And I've also told you about economics and finance. So economics and finance is a program which is offered jointly by the two schools, Humanities and Social Sciences and uh, Business School. Okay. Uh, and uh, did I cover everything? Yeah. So this is this is for school. So the, the biggest differentiator uh, parameter is that suppose you're a student of computer science. Okay. You will have, will, I mean, there is a fixed course of computer science, but there is, you have to do six courses from other departments. Oh. There's no choice there. What the choice is that which course you will do from that's your choice. Okay. Similarly, everybody in the university, whether you are a computer science student or a history student or a sociology student or a design student, whatever, everybody has to do some fixed eight courses, which are courses in history, uh, environment, sustainability. Uh, we are doing, and those are mandatory. Everybody has to do it. So those are very, very important courses, you know. So uh, a sustainability expert in you know, last uh, month, we had a, a conference and they were so happy to hear that here is a university which at this point of time is teaching courses on sustainability to the students, which is a big thing, right? You know, uh, the goals of sustainability. And we all know the climate change, the problem. We can't make individual contributions, uh, which is so big, but the fact that we are aware itself makes a huge difference. If all of us are aware, collectively, we can make a huge difference. And that's what we believe. Oh, I so agree, sir. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so these courses which you mentioned are mandatory are taken up in the foundational year. That's the first yes, year. Yes, or no, they are spread across all four years. Spread they are across spread across, across all four years, mostly first three years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, and what is the admission procedure, uh, doc, Dr. Singh? If we before we proceed, if I could get uh, screen sharing, and you know, I just wanted I'll to tell them that. about yeah, the. Yeah, yeah I'll remove it. Thank you so much. I'll just uh, let everybody know about our next session. Uh, so um, before we uh, go uh, further with the question and answer with Dr. Singh, just to let all of you present in the session today know that uh, uh, on the 2nd of December, 2022, that's this Friday, we are going to be having uh, uh, the, a session by Professor Dr. Nagendra Parashar, who's the Vice Chancellor of Himgiri Z University, Dehradun. And the topic is on attitude and success, just like today uh, uh, was on multidisciplinary learning. I think, again, attitude and success, like Dr. Singh mentioned, is also a very, very critical topic. And I think uh, if we have the right attitude, then there's no end to, don't, no dearth to learning, no end to learning. So I would request all of, our, all of the parents, teachers, and students to make uh, use of this opportunity on the 2nd of December and join us for the next uh, session of uh, Litra Gantavia 2022. Uh, continuing with the uh, Q&A, sir, uh, uh, so your, uh, what are your admission timelines and what is the admission procedure? So the, uh, you know, the procedure is different for different schools. Just a second. Give me a few minutes. Okay. 
the procedure are different for different schools. So if you are in, uh, let's say, applying for School of Engineering, uh, there is a, one admission route is through JE, okay. The other is through our own exam, which we call it SNU SAT. The third one is through the you know the the college board SAT, and the fourth one is ACT. Some of them will have interview, some of them will not have. So that that detailed information will be there on the website from tomorrow. Okay, so we are open. I mean the the new information for twenty three admission will be live probably by tomorrow. We are working on that, uh, and the applications will start from fifth of uh, December. Okay. For, so for each school, there's a different route. Sciences, for example, again, will be through our own exam or through JE or through SAT or through uh, ACT and mostly the same thing. Some of the departments take interviews, some of them may not take interviews. So this is the only difference. Uh, timeline, uh, the application will start from to, uh, you know, to December 5 and will be available till June uh, 23. But we have a rolling, we're basically looking at rolling admission so the advantage of early application is that you know you will get your preferred major <clears throat> because later admissions will be only subject to available number of seats and we are small university in terms of uh, our intake unlike many large we are very large in terms of we are we are close to 300 acres of uh, size and our student intake is only uh, 900 <coughs> sorry Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh, for those answers. Uh, we've got a question from Vaibhavi at Ghazipur uh, who wants to know why is collaboration so important in computer science or any other subject? So computer science is very interesting. Uh, so my, my students or myself, you know, uh, for example, okay, let me take my example. I have published papers just now, it, it got accepted. So one of the person is in New York University. One is in uh, McKinsey. I am here, and the third, fourth one is in UK at Edinburgh University. And uh, at least since last three years, I have not met any one of them. Okay, but we work together to produce a paper, and we are at four different places. Collaboration brings basically a different perspective. I can't do every. See, this is the problem of what we used to do earlier and now. I have to assume that I can't be expert in everything. Time is finite. Okay, so I have a choice. I need to become expert, but I can become expert only in few things. Okay, so, but I need to know something about other things. That's what we call as T-shaped education. T-shaped says know something about other things and know everything about one or two things. Okay, so I know something about my own field. I go to another expert who is expert in his field. And therefore four of these experts came together and were able to talk to each other because of something other knowledge and were able to sit together online and collaborate and produce a paper. It is very, very important for all of us to, we cannot walk alone, unlike, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, Elon Musk. Uh, I, I think it's in general, it is very hard to become, uh, to do something meaningful if we are working alone, it is impossible, okay? So working together gives you much better outcome then what you can, there are exceptions, okay? There are always exceptions, but I'm not talking about that. In general, the, the top percentile, 25 percentile I'm talking about, I'm leaving the 0.1 percentile who are, you know, different kind of people, but the, the top 25 percentile always will <clears throat> come to that success only if they know how to collaborate. And we collaborate every day, okay? You and cannot- It's not limited to any one particular field. Yeah, it's important in every field. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question, Dr. Singh, is from Alif Fatima Rudrapur. Uh, she's asking what matters the most, marks or interest in choosing a career? Okay, so first of all, uh, our problem is uh, there are no standard answer in India, okay? Uh, because we have too many limitations. So I can say, okay, marks doesn't matter, interest matters. But the problem is, where is the job for that? Where is the university for that interest? I'm interested in sports. How many universities in India gives a degree in sports, right? So the challenge is this. So we have to balance till the time we go to that stage. See, we are developing very fast. And, you know, India of 2040 would be very different, very, very different. Okay. Okay. So we need to prepare ourselves. 
I would currently say there are certain limitations. We have to go with that. Marks is also important. Okay. But don't die for marks. Okay. Keep other interests alive. Okay. So that is important. Don't say that it is not. It is important. And we have to just find the right balance. And that balance can happen because of our situation, our, our children's uh, own interest. Okay. So I wanted my daughter to become a computer scientist. She has no interest. She's saying, okay, I'll do law. That's fine. Okay. So now I've, I've moderated. I said, okay, you, uh, you do something in law and something in computer science. As she's saying, okay. Why do I say this? Because I want good things for her. I'm not saying law is bad. Okay. But I have a perception that for, uh, for her, looking her own at her aptitude, this might be better. That she has a different opinion and she's just 13 years old. So all I need to do is I need to work together and say, do something for life, do something for living. Both needs to be balanced. Right? True. True. So true. Something for life and something for living. Unfortunately, we try to merge the two or we yeah, pick it's, one it's, and then we kind of compromise on the other. Yeah. Um, yes. uh, there is a question from Ekta Singh. I probably she did not understand. She was asking if all these courses started after 10th or 12th. I understand they all start after grade 12 because these are undergrad courses. Yeah, these are undergrad courses. Yes. Uh, so Ekta, the answer to you is that they are all courses which will begin after your grade 12. Uh, uh, sir, when I was reading about the university, I realized that a lot of emphasis is being given to research. Uh, so in that case, I'm sure you're also giving a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, encouragement, push and motivation to people who want to, children who want to do, become entrepreneurs going ahead. Yes. So is yes. there any kind of an incubation which is offered at the university? So yes, we have an incubation center, which we call it Atal Incubation Center. We've got a grant from the government and we have put in equal money and we have 10,000 square feet of uh, space that we've created for incubating many of the companies. And it is not only true for students of SNU, but even from outside. Oh, okay. Anybody can come and occupy this space. So we just last week only, we did a conference where we invited top shot of few companies who spoke with our students and faculty members were working. And even faculty members can actually uh, start their own companies. So we have a policy on that. We're trying to encourage, this is why I'm saying the students of today are very different. Okay, they are, they just need an environment and support. Okay, and we are trying to create that environment and support. Okay, we are hell bent on saying that you know this is a generation which can achieve anything. Okay, because they're confident, they are not working only for bread and butter, which was the problem of 20 years back. They are working for their own life. They're saying, Okay, I don't care about this. My father has earned enough. I want to now satisfy myself. Okay, and this is a good thing, this is a good problem to have. Right. So it is, it is, it is not easy. I mean, th this has its own problem, but uh, you know, uh, the incubation, the entrepreneurship or the research, all of them requires one simple skill, which is that you are ready to innovate. You are ready to do something new. And all those things will require far more hard work than normal. Okay. So if somebody is starting a company of his own, he'll have to work for 24 hours. Rather than eight hours, you know, you go to school at nine o'clock or eight o'clock and come back at three o'clock, job is done. Entrepreneur will have to work 24 hours. True, true, true. That's true. So, I mean, we are practically trying to just provide them an, an environment of yes. in which they can nurture those, uh, you know, their talents and they can nurture that innovation and come out with something radical which will uh, go ahead and support humanity at large. Yeah, we are, we are providing them and supporting them at every step at every step, we are holding their hand saying, you want help, I'll help you. That's a pretty safe environment to work in when you know that you're scaffolded at all times. I think yes. you know, that kind of gives yeah. you that uh, encouragement to go ahead. And we it's have not mandatory, you know, it's not mandatory. You are interested, the student has to approach, right? They have to approach us that we are trying to do something. They, they tell their ideas and we, we support them in all possible ways. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Singh, we have another question from Vaibhavi Negi of Rudrapur. Uh, should we take help of um, AI resources to enhance our abilities? Yes, we must. Anything which is available and you feel it can help, take the help. We just, I keep saying, do not shy from taking help 
of what is available. Okay. If it can improve, you see, if we improve 1% every day, at the end of the year, you'll have a tremendous improvement. So do that. Anything which can help you and the student is convinced, go. don't force it. Okay. I tell my children, I'm just take, talking as a parent, Every, I don't tell them what to do. I just tell them stories every day. Oh, this, this story, that, just to motivate them. And ultimately they start, I don't prepare a calendar for them. They prepare themselves. I keep telling them, if you plan, outcome will be better. If you plan this. So, you know, I have a view I share with them. Ultimately, they have to understand, embrace it. So let them use any resource that you think. AI is a resource which is useful. Do get, use YouTube, use any resource which is available, which you think is okay. And, but curate that. You know, the problem of internet is there are many things which is, you know, uh, there. Half of them, um, first of all, are not from right sources. So I think the parent's job is to basically look at what are the sources from where these are coming. Okay, so those things you should curate. Right. Uh, that's what we say that knowledge is not is about accruing everything and wisdom is to know what to use and when to yeah. use it. I think that's exactly what you were trying to say. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, um, there is another question from P. Kirtana Reddy of Rudrapur. In our, one second, in our class, the marks are most relevant. Uh, probably that's what the teacher wants to say. <laughs> So, uh, and probably they should not getting enough uh, areas to explore her interest. So she's saying, I'm in class eight. What am I supposed to think about that? Wherein the entire emphasis by her educators is on the marks alone. So there is a possibility. First of all, you know, our students also need to learn, understand that we have to be strategic. And when you say strategic, you know, there are, there are possibilities of getting the marks without spending all the time right so it's like if i have to get the marks in the exam i should be smart enough to understand that i can get that in one hour of study so i keep telling people that you know one of the challenges that we face difficulty every day is that we postpone all the things to the end okay. if you are consistent with your studies just spend one hour of whatever was done in the class it is so easy that, you know, at the end of the day, you do not have to struggle. The struggle happens because we don't do that revision. We postpone everything and we start studying everything just before the exam. How will you, it's like a, it's like a medical pill. Doctor gives me a medicine, says that eat one every day for one month. I can't stop eating and eat 30 at the 30th day. That's not going to work. Okay. So if I have to study for some time every day, that is more important than more time on one day. So that, you know, the mind also needs some relaxation. Right? So st strategic moves are very important. Children need to understand if something is needed, do it. There are multiple good ways of doing that and satisfying your other requirements as well. So right. true, Dr. Singh. So true, I hear you so much on that because... Uh, as an educator, I would often tell my students that procrastination is the cause of all their stress because if they had done it at the right time, then the last nth hour studying and the nth hour pressure which is getting to them would all kind of be wiped away. So, yeah, but the procrastination is not a only students. It's an Indian no, problem. All, it's all an Indian us. problem. We are okay. all guilty to it. About it. Yeah, yeah. So we, we just, all of us, so they, they learn not only from, uh, they learn from the parents. They learn, they <laughs> learn from every parents, teachers, Everybody does the same thing. If you have to take an exam, you will not set the paper one month back. You will set just a day before, right? That's what happens. So we need to get our actions together because students learn not from what we say. They learn from what they see. I agree. Okay? So they need to see the right things. Right. So as far as procrastination is concerned, we need to learn to live by example, lead by example. <laughs> I like many other things. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, uh, discussion with you, Dr. Singh. I don't see any more questions. Um, maybe one last one. Uh, yeah, one last one. Uh, Josie Malik from Rudrapur. Sir, what do you think is more important, imagination or knowledge? I would say imagination. There is an easy question. Uh, see, some knowledge is essential for imagination, let me tell you. You cannot imagine without having anything, okay? But given, you know, suppose, so minimum knowledge is needed, first of all, okay? After that, 
the creativity and imagination is what has made human beings come to this stage all other species could could not come to this level of development because they hopefully we, as we know today they do not most of them do not have power of imagination okay if a if a if a tiger chases a target it has a ability to do some physics that okay if i run with this speed and in this direction i can go and catch that but it doesn't know that if i don't eat, eat this what will i do will i survive can i those kind of imagination it doesn't have okay so the power of imagination is the probably the only reason why we have grown to this level uh, in such a short span span of uh, evolutionary theory that we know of okay so you know between the two imagination is definitely important i think imagination creativity curiosity that's yeah. what is going to lead us to new things in life yeah But the challenge is that education system actually has been responsible for that's killing so exactly that <laughs> right Right. We've ta taught somehow the education system has taught everybody to think linearly. So therefore, no, but you know, I don't blame the teachers because I am myself a teacher. <laughs> the problem is, it is a systemic failure. You know, the teacher starts you know teaching in a different way. Even the parents will object. They'll say, "Oh, my child is not learning. He's not scoring good in twelfth. What are you right. teaching physics?" Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem with the system. It's a systemic failure. Right. What What can you do if you are somebody saying? what is the average marks of class 12 both exam from this school so then everybody will work for the marks true true is anybody true. asking this question that which school in the country produces the most imaginative child nobody is asking this question right i agree so we, you we also are asking, asking the about... right question yeah, yeah we start asking the right question only then we'll get the right set of people right now we are not in that state you were speaking about fixed and growth mindset so i think that is very critical here like you said that the parents are also thinking in that manner so it's very difficult to create a diversion there and do something new and listen until there's a proper mindset uh, change in you know yeah. everybody around and i think uh, mount litra to a great extent with their emergent student profile is trying to do that where we are trying to work on all areas whether it's knowledge or skills or core values very and everything so that He can Excellent. create uh, that. No, I do see that. that schools of today are working very hard, and I hope and that is why I am very hopeful that in future, uh, you know, we I am very hopeful that India of tomorrow is going to be very very successful. Into that, thank you so much, Dr. Singh, for taking time out and being here today and addressing all our uh, students and teacher queries. Uh, that was indeed insightful. Thank you from the entire uh, Z family for being here today. Uh, just a quick reminder to all our parents and students on the meeting today that the next session is on 2nd of December, Friday. Uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Nagarendra Parashar will be here with us from Hindi Z University, Dehradun. So please do join Thank us you. for this session. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Singh. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye bye.